Okay, I think I will get started on this. So I basically have one slide seminar that is divided into two. Um, I'm doing it sort of problem-based, as you will see, or I should say pattern-based. The first group of cases are all fatty tumors, which is a very practical topic to talk about because we see a lot of fatty tumors. In fact, this first case that I'm gonna show you is one of the most common consults that I see. Okay, so. Um, I've got some real brief histories here. This is, you know, these are kind of made up histories, but they're pretty typical of the kind of histories that we get, at least in soft tissue pathology. A 49-year-old female with a three centimeter shoulder mass. Actually, we don't even get that much history. You have to, you have to look it up and find out, you know, how big the tumor is, where it is, whether it's superficial or deep, which by the way, um, and Darcy's gonna talk about you know, sort of bone type stuff where looking at radiologic reports is obviously really important. We're all taught that. But in soft tissue, it actually can be quite helpful too. Maybe not quite as useful, but I think it's pretty helpful with regard to finding out whether a tumor is superficial or deep, what structures it's related to, things like that, which won't come on a requisition. Okay, so here's the case. So so what I'm, what I'm always going to do is, is, is sort of get your impression from low power, okay? As much as you can say about things from low power, um, because a lot of soft tissue is actually a low power diagnosis to be, and that's true of GI and it's definitely true of soft tissue. So I already told you we're starting off with fatty tumors and, and we are. Um, anybody have any thoughts about this? Just anybody. Comments about low power, that, anything that you can see here. Circumscribed, right? Circumscribed. Uh, here's a comment. Um, interestingly, we actually have some soft tissue around the tumor. So it looks like the soft tissue around the tumor looks like fat. So that gives me the impression that this is probably subcutaneous, okay? But a lot of times, I'll tell you, you don't have any tissue around these lesions. And, um, and so you don't know whether it's superficial or deep. I mean, your guess is as good as mine. I mean, sometimes you'll see skeletal muscle around it. Sometimes you'll see fat around it. That gives you a, an indication whether it's superficial or deep. But a lot of times, surgeons just shell these things out, and you don't know whether it's superficial or deep. So, so in this case, we actually have some histologic evidence that this thing is subcutaneous, which is pretty important for reasons that I will get into. The only other thing I can tell at low power is it's, it's actually mostly fatty, but there's some degree of cellularity here at low power and probably a little bit of maybe myxoid change. That's about all I can tell. Now I'm getting into a little bit higher power. And from this magnification, this is what I like to do I, in, in a fatty tumor. I'm talking about specifically a well-differentiated fatty tumor. Um, is there cytologic atypia at this magnification? Yes or no? Yes, okay, great. Um, that pretty much limits it to two possible fatty tumors, um, pleomorphic lipoma and a atypical lipomatous tumor. Let's talk about nomenclature. Atypical lipomatous tumor is a synonym for a well-differentiated liposarcoma. These, these are all common tumors. Literally, I, I, we see these cases every day. Um, so the differential diagnosis here is 